In this video, we're going to talk about optimistic UI, specifically when it's in place. We're editing like one little piece of the interface. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I've got my Trellix board here, and I can click on these buttons, these headers, they're buttons, and, um, and I can say in progress, hit enter, and then it goes back to a button, and I don't see any flashes, I don't see any pending indicators, I don't see any spinners. I'm just letting the, the network do its thing. Here we can come down here and slow things down and show uh, what's going on here. That as I, oops, as I change this uh, to doing, hit enter, you can see that it's making a post and then it's revalidating and all those things. But we don't see that in the UI, we just see the value update immediately. So let's look at how we can do this and uh, also see what your UI might do before you implement something like this. Here's my component. It's no longer doing the optimistic UI. It's a little thing called editable text. It's reused in a few places in this app. Um, you can see that it's using a fetcher. Uh, we got a couple of events, a couple of ways to submit this form. So just a normal, normal fetcher form. So if I hit enter inside of this field, it's going to submit. Um, it's got a flush sync here because I'm managing focus. Uh, that's a separate topic in in React, but the point is that I know that this state update is done uh, so that on the very next line I can go focus a button instead of trying to do a whole bunch of circular tricks with use effect. Uh, and that's going to come into play a little bit later here too. Uh, on key down, let's see, no, on blur, if I just blur the field, we're going to go submit the fetcher. And so those are, those are our two events. So a normal submission, or if we blur, we want to actually submit this thing too. So let's, let's see what it looks like now. Uh, that I don't have the optimistic UI in place. So I'm going to change this to in progress, hit enter. You see the, the flicker? Here, let me do it again. You Blur, I'm gonna blur it now. Three, two, one, blur. So we're getting that, that flicker and that's uh, that in between time of when it's making a post and then when the revalidation comes back. Let's exaggerate this. Uh, just to really drive the point home so we can really see what's going on. Fast 3G, I'm going to say ew. Uh, notice, and let me bump this up a bit. Let's watch the um, network tab down here. It's a gross, actually, I think when I blurred it, you already saw it, but I didn't get to see it, so this part's for me. So I'm going to hit enter su to submit this, and uh, watch, watch the, the field and the requests down here. So if you kind of maybe rewind this video and watch them both, but while this post is going out in this time, and then when the revalidation comes back for that whole duration of these two requests, uh, it's showing the old value. See, watch, here we go. Old value. I hit enter, it's gonna say gross, and then it says old value. So what's going on here is we have passed in a value to this component, and then on our button, because we're switching over to a button here, the text inside of that button, um, is right here, this value. <laughs> Sorry, I lost it there for a second. Uh, it's, it's just rendering that value, and that's the value coming from the database, from our, from our routes and our loader data. So what we want to do is trick this value to think that it's something else. And Remix will actually is already keeping track of that state for us. So we don't need to bring in any extra use states to track this variable. Uh, the fetcher already has it. So I'm going to say if fetcher.formData. So this form data, it may or may not be there. It'll be there if the fetcher is currently submitting something. There won't be form data if it's not. So I can just uh, use this little uh, trick here, that syntax with a question mark. If we've got form data, and then I've got this thing called field name, so I know uh, what field is going through in the post. We can see that down here, our payload, we've got an intent, column ID, and name. Uh, when I created this uh, editable text thing, I'm telling it, hey, what's, what's the field name? And this one, it's name. It could be intent, it could be anything. Uh, but that's a bit of abstraction you don't really have to worry about. You may just have something like here, like title or, or whatever it is. But in my little abstraction here, it's called field name, so I can reuse it. So if I've got one of those, actually I can say has with form data, I'm going to trick this value. I think Copilot had it for me. Um, 
and I'm going to actually say this with a string in front of it to do the coercion at runtime instead of, uh, instead of forcing it in the type system. So yeah, so now what I'm saying is don't use the value that came from my prop. Well, we're going to use it. We're just overwriting its, its, uh, its current uh, string inside of there. So we're going to say if the fetch or form data is going over the network, so for both of these requests during the post, for the post and the get, for both of them, this form data is going to be there. We're going to have the field name in there. And so we're going to reassign the value to what's actually going over the network. And now my app down here where it's rendering that value, it'll just say what's going over the network. And then when the form data is no longer going over the network, when this is no longer true, then we'll simply uh, not use this value, but it will simply use the value from the prop. So let's save this, see how it goes. So I'm going to say better, and I'm going to blur this one. So three, two, one, blur. Okay, notice how the network is going. Very nice. The network is going, so I'm going to blur it again, three, two, one, blur but the value isn't like bouncing around to what it used to be and now what it is. We get to look at that pending information while it's going over the network. So really, really simple uh, trick here. Um, and I'm sorry for everybody who uses const everywhere and I get a lot of grief for using let. Uh, it's kind of funny that if you have props to a component, nothing you can do about it, that is a let by default. And like you can't even change it to a const. So like there's nothing you can do. I guess you could make a lint rule, but anyway. Total side note, I still love you if you use const. Uh, but yeah, nice, nice little, very simple trick there. Ask Remix what's going over the network, and then we'll use that value. Um, we're going to run into an issue here because I'm using flush sync, and I kind of wanted to get into like some really nitty gritty stuff to build really great UIs. Uh, let me close the network tab. Um, that last one I did a blur, and the blur was fine, I just said fetch or submit and set edit false. And this all worked great because I'm not using flush sync. But as soon as I bring flush sync in, and again, I brought this in so that I could have a little bit simpler um, focus management, we're going to have a little problem. We're still going to get a flicker. So watch, when I hit enter, enter is going to do submit instead of blur. Oh, I don't know if you noticed. Did you notice? Yeah. Ew, that one didn't. Sometimes, yeah, that one did. As you can see, I'm editing this video and I didn't record at a fast enough frame rate for you to even notice the flicker. So just believe me, there's a flicker. Okay, so what's happening is React batch is rendering. Not, not just React, actually, all the, all the front end rendering libraries like React, uh, they, they batch rendering um, for, for a lot of reasons. We're not gonna go into it. And so this flush sync is telling React, hey, I don't want you to batch this. I want you to set edit so on the very next line I can go focus that button. Otherwise, I got to do a bunch of weird tricks with use effect. Um, so what happens here is it says set edit false, uh, goes back, and now I can focus the button. And then the fetcher form underneath has its own submit handler on this form. And so that's a, that's a different state update. So they're in two different batches. And so that's why, why we get the flicker, because we go back to edit faults, but fetch your form data for like a little split second uh, isn't there yet because it, it's in a different batch of rendering. Um, when a fetch your form submits, Remix is doing a state update. And here in my app, I'm doing a state update and they got put in different batches. So uh, what we want to do is make sure that these are in the same batch. So I'm going to say event prevent default here. So I'm going to say, hey, fetcher.form, I don't want you to do your normal thing. Uh, and I'm going to add into this batch a fetcher submit event current target. So instead of being in two batches, now they're in the same batch. Un unfortunate stuff you got to think about sometimes. I still think that this is way better than messing around with uh, use effect to try to get all the timing right. I always have bugs when I try to do it that way. Um, and a lot of people are like, oh, why don't you give us a promise off of fetch or submit so I can await it and then I can set edit or whatever. Uh, as soon as you do that, you're going to have a bunch of other bugs and you're going to manage state internally the very same way that Remix is managing state internally for those promises. Uh, so in the end, 
you'll find your bugs and then you'll end up with the very same API that Fetcher has of like revealing state to you and hiding all the async parts. Um, otherwise, you'll have bugs. Uh, maybe not. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you won't. Um, I do uh, until we focus really hard in Remix to cover over that stuff. So should be fixed. Enter. Lovely. Do it again. Dang, that's smooth. So that is in place optimistic UI. It's very simple. You just ask the fetcher for its state and render that instead. It can get a little bit more intricate if you're doing focus management and messing with the React render lifecycle with flush sync or the, I guess the batching. Um, but still, it's super easy with this API. You just say, hey, submit that form. So very nice.